Welcome back to the channel. Just to recap what we did in part one. As you can see, we painted up the interior and did a bit of weathering, installed the clear parts, and then joined the fuselage halves together and dealt with the center seam. So we need to push on with the build now. So we're going to start off by constructing the turrets, beginning with the front turret. So you can see the parts break down from the instructions. And what you need to be aware of on most of these parts are ejector pins to take care of, so we need to sand them out. And once we've done that, we can carry on with the construction. So this is a bracket which holds the 303 machine guns. What I've needed to do here is clean it out so the hole that accepts the machine gun we've just cleaned out using a knife blade. And then test fitting here, the fit is very tight, so the tolerances on this kit are very close. So if you're finding that parts aren't going together, just make sure you're being stringent with your parts cleanup. Just take care of any seams and any sprue tabs that are left over. But we've used a bit of extra thin to help get these parts to meld together. And we're doing the same thing on the other side. Just adding a little bit of glue to that hole and then squeezing the parts together. And we're just checking the alignment, making sure everything's square. And now we need to carry on with the construction of the main housing itself. So you've got this central part here, there's a couple of pegs which are keyed. And then we can fit this assembly of the machine guns that we've done in the previous step. There's a square peg that locates in the side. So we can come in with the other side now. So we've got the hole at the bottom, the top, and the square peg in the side. So once you offer that part up, it's a little bit fiddly to get everything to go together. And once everything's together, just give it a bit of a squeeze to make sure they're all correctly seated. And at this point we can fit the rear seat. So this fits in between the two halves. There's a couple of holes and the little pegs on the seat itself. Just locate into place. And then this main assembly we can fit into the collar, just a case of sliding this in. Again, the fit's quite tight, so just take your time, but make sure it's correctly seated. And once we're happy with that, we can glue it all together. As you see, the fit is quite tight, so the friction itself is holding all these parts together. And once we're happy with the assembly, as I say, we're just uh, coming in with the glue and gluing it all together. Got the last piece here, this framing going in. There's a couple of pegs at the bottom and a tabs at the top. We just hold that into place. And just securing that using some extra thin. So now we're test fitting the clear parts just to make sure they fit. So no problems at all. But what we'll need to do is we'll need to paint the interior and then fit the clear parts afterwards. So with that in mind we'll move on with the rest of the turrets. So this is the mid upper. So a similar assembly sequence to the front turret we've just done. A few pieces of photo etched to represent the seat belts to do as well. And then this main assembly sits in this collar which will then be fitted to the fuselage. And we've got clear parts which we'll need to install once we've painted everything. So just showing you here, taking care of those ejector pins. There's a couple more there by my thumb. And there's also quite a nasty one in the back of here. So you might want to take care of that. I would just flood it with some Mr. Surfacer filler and just let it self-level. Should take care of it, no problem. So a similar thing to we did to the front turret. And then coming in with the bracket for the machine guns. So I've opted not to fit the barrels at this point. And we'll do that at the last stage, just to avoid causing any damage. Same thing again with the seat coming in at the back. The fact it's able to swing makes it easier to install the photo etch later on as well, which is quite handy. So now that we've got that together, this whole assembly goes into the collar. Just the one thing to be aware of, on the outside edge of the ammo canisters that I'm pointing out here is raised rivet detail. 
So if you're struggling to get this collar on, just kind of wiggle it into place just to get it over that raised detail. And same thing again, we've got this top framing coming in. Just locates at the bottom, a couple of tabs at the top. And then this rear collar going on the bottom as well. And once we're happy, we can glue all that together, which I've actually done off camera. So now we're on to the rear turret. Slightly different part sequence. Just looking at this, the instructions, checking the uh, correct assembly sequence. So just be aware of that. A few photo etch parts to fit as well. And the clear parts coming in, and then some photo etch. These are representing the ammo shoots. So this is where the spent casings come out from the 303s, get ejected out the back of the turret. So we've cleaned up some of the parts. There's a mould seam line to take care of here. So just deal with that, just scrape it out, or sand it out, whatever you prefer. Got this main centre console, the controls for the gunner. It's just two halves just gluing together, and then once we've done that we can secure it in the base plate. Just sort of snaps into place. And then once we're happy with that, we can secure it using some glue from the underside. Now we've got these side plates coming in, there's a square tab which helps locate them. Just secure that into position. And the same thing on the other side. Just gluing that down. And once we've done that, we've got this, I believe it's a gun sight, although I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, this part just slots into place, similar idea to the seats. Once it locates in the side, there's a couple of holes where the pegs locate. And then we can check the position and glue it in place. And now you've got these side plates coming in, which hold the 303 machine guns. So you can see there's actually photo etch installed in these parts, but ignore that. I've got the assembly sequence wrong. So what I've had to do is pull everything apart again and start again. So what I've tried to do is show you the correct assembly sequence the reason I haven't removed the photo etch is I don't want to further bend it. But what I've managed to do through editing is hopefully you guys can follow this along. So as I say, we're just securing the outer plate into position. I'm having to use quite a lot of glue just to melt away that damage that I've caused when we've pulled the parts apart. So once we're happy with position, at this point you'll be coming in using some super glue to secure the photo etch into place. So hopefully through this editing you get the idea of the sequence. So using some slower setting super glue, this is a thicker gel solution. It just gives you a bit more time to manipulate the part to make sure you get it correctly seated. And particularly at the bottom, make sure it's clear of the lip, which the clear part will be sitting into. At the top, there's a locating peg, kind of half moon shape, which helps get this into the right position. And once we're happy with that, just test fitting the 303s. But what we'll do is we'll paint this up separately. But before we do that, we'll do one more thing, just to add a little bit extra detail. So the machine guns themselves are quite nicely formed. The only thing they're lacking is detail on the end of the barrel. So you can see it's just a flat, there's no hollow. So quite an easy thing to do, we're going to drill them out. So first of all using a pin just to get a centre point. Which allows the micro drill to seat correctly. And avoids it skipping over the surface. So we're just boring that out a fraction. A couple of millimetres is all we need. So we've done a couple here. And we'll compare that to the standard part. So it's just a case of going around doing the rest of them. And now we're painting them up using Tamiya LP5, which is a semi-gloss black. And at the same time, we're priming the turrets using Mr. Surfacer 1500 black. And we've thinned that using self-leveling thinners. Same process we did in part one when we were priming up the interior. So once we're happy, everything has got a nice coat, we'll leave those parts to dry. 
We've got the machine gun barrels here, so we're using some Mr. Metal Colour, and this is the dark iron. So this is a buffable metallic. So we're just knocking most of it off the brush, and then dry brushing it onto the actual machine guns. So what this will do is we'll pick up the raised detail and really make it pop out. And that's the end result. So if we compare that to just a standard painted black machine gun, you should be able to see the difference. So it's quite a good technique. So now we've got the main turrets themselves, we've given them a coat of XF69 NATO black. And we're doing the same thing we did with machine gun barrels, we're just giving them a dry brush using the dark iron. Because it's a buffable, the more you buff, the shinier it gets. So it's something to be aware of. I actually went a bit far on the machine gun barrels, so we need to take care of them later on. And we also need to clean up the, uh, the ends, as you can see. So we'll sort them out. But moving on, we'll do the rest of the turrets, mid upper turret and the rear turret here. So using the dark iron gives quite a nice effect. It makes parts look quite heavy and, me and metallic, or sort of heavy metal look. And again, just sort of rotating it in the light just catches it differently. So just test fitting the machine guns themselves. And now we're trying the clear parts in the mid upper turret to see if we can glue this together and install it as a oneer. But unfortunately what we'll need to do is we'll need to mask these up separately and then glue them in place using some crystal clear. So what I'm pointing out is you can't get this clear part in place with the machine guns glued in. So we'll need to mask it up, spray it, and then once we're happy, we can then glue the two halves together. And just pointing out here, you've got idler wheels on the bottom of the machine guns. Just be careful removing the clear parts, you don't break them off. Test fitting the clear parts for the front, and also for the rear turret as well. So we're on to masking now. So we're using a mask set from a company called Artscale Kit. They're not a manufacturer I've dealt with in the past. But I was very impressed with the mask set. They were the only ones that had a mask set out at the time of filming. So similar to most other companies, you've obviously got individual panels. So there's no issues at all. They're all really well cut. The difference mainly is the parts are labelled. So you can see the numbering on each individual masking panel, which corresponds to the instruction sheet. So it makes masking up a doddle. Goes down really well. Really good adhesion, conforms well to the surface, so I'd highly recommend this product if you're looking for a mask set. So we've done the rest of the turrets, there's the rear one here. And at the same point we've also installed the side windows for the canopy, and we're just clamping that in place while it dries. We've also used some micro mass fluid to fill in the gaps, so on the curvature parts of the canopy, we've just used some of that to mask it up. We've glued the front turret together, the clear parts, because we can fit this in a one -er. We've also installed the photo etch seat belts as well. So now we're spraying the clear parts as mentioned before. I'm using Tamiya XF69 thinned with their acrylic thinner. And the reason for doing this using acrylic paints if we do get any overspray, when we come to unmask, it would be quite easy to clean it up. You can rub it away using a cocktail stick without it doing any damage to your clear parts. What I'm also doing here is being careful how I'm spraying, so the angles I'm using. I'm trying to avoid getting any overspray on the interior parts. But if we do, because it's an acrylic paint, we can clean it up quite easily. So it's just a case of going around and priming everything up. So now we're on to the engines, you've got four of these to make, so we'll go through one of them. So you've got two halves of the block which join together. And to get rid of the centre seam, if you use quite a lot of glue and then give it a good squeeze together, you can make most of these seams disappear. Yep, 
The kit provides us with some really nice detail, especially being moulded in styrene, which you'll see later on. So we've got the sump plate coming in the underside, just snaps into place. And we've got the top half of the engine coming in. So similar to the turrets, the tolerances are very tight. So I'm having to squeeze everything together to get that gap to disappear. But by the time you use some glue, that gap mostly disappears. So just giving everything a good nudge, make sure you don't get any fingerprints, any gaps I'm seeing, just coming back in with the glue and trying to give it a bit of a nudge, just try and get those gaps to close. And once we're happy with that we can fit the rocker covers. So the rocker covers themselves are left and right handed, so just be aware of that when you come to do this. Just a couple of holes at the top, there's a few pins at the back, just slots into place. And now we've got the gearing, the reductor gear, going on the front half of the engine. There's a couple of ejector bins in the back of this, which you might want to take care of, but they're mostly hidden by the time you get it installed in the block. And now we've got the rear supercharger and carburetor unit going on. Again, it's quite tight to fit on, so using a bit of extra glue and you can see the amount of force here I'm having to use to get these parts to seat. So just give it a good shove. And I've got this top hose to get this gap rid of. And just again, using some glue and giving it a nudge. And I've got the bottom radiator. And this is how it all looks before going into paint. So really nice details popping out, riveting detail and the wiring as well. So what I've done is I've painted this up for you. So we used LP5 semi-gloss black for the block, AK aluminium for the aluminium parts like the radiator, and just dry brushed the entire thing to pull the details out, make them stand out. So you can see it really comes up really nice. Quite impressive actually. So moving on to the props, again we've got four of these to build up. So the weight of the Kate, there's a couple of tabs which the blades themselves sit into, but be aware the fit's quite vague. So you'll need to make sure everything's correctly aligned by eyeball. So what I'm doing here is just spinning things around, we're just having to adjust this blade itself. You can use the spinner cap to keep yourself right, so if you offer that up to the rest of the prop, you can just check the alignment, make sure everything looks okay. So again, just holding it down on a flat surface and rotating it, and just eyeballing it to make sure everything looks okay. And checking the true of the propeller, so just spinning it a cocktail stick just to make sure the blades are in the right alignment. So onto the nacelles, we've got a bulkhead which fits in the rear. There's a little tab in the side, just locates in the side of the actual sideball itself. You can also see on this part, they've given you a cut line to remove the cowling. Something I missed in the review, but it's been pointed out. So if you wanted to display the engines open, you would just cut this panel out, which will allow you to obviously access to see in, to see all that nice detail. But personally, I'm going to have everything closed up. The reason behind this, as you can see at the moment, we're fitting the engine to the bulkhead, and there's a pin at the back which just locates into the bulkhead itself. We're also fitting the vent at the bottom. But the reason I don't want to display the engines is I would like there to be more detail on the interior and what I mean by that is on a real life Lancaster there would be a framing that would hold the engine into place. The engine doesn't just plug into a bulkhead as the kit's representing. So if I was going to do this I would do a fair bit of scratch building but I really wanted to get on with the build. So as I say we painted the engines up to give you guys an idea of what things look like. And just pointing out here we're making sure this bulkhead's correctly seated. just using a bit of extra thin to try and seal up the gap and any gaps that appear we just add a little bit more glue and give it a bit of a nudge just seals everything up and now we're just test fitting to the underside of the wing so no real issues there 
So we're moving on, we've got the inner nacelle, which has got the wheel well as well. So the top plate goes in, there's three pegs just locating the side, securing that in place. And then we've got a bulkhead to go on the front and the back. A little bit of detail which we'll paint later on. Again, just securing that in place. I'm having to hold these parts together as they naturally want to spring open. So it's the same thing as I was saying before, the tolerances are very tight. But once we establish with no interference from sprue tabs or any burring from the moulding procedure, and by the time you use a little bit of glue, it just melts everything together and holds it in position. So going round, just making sure all these tabs are nice and secure, we want good strong joints as this is quite a structural part that will support the weight of the model. And like we've done before, we're just installing the bottom vent. We're doing this before installing the engine, it just makes it a little bit easier. And securing that in place. And once we're happy with that, same as we've done before, we can locate the bulkhead in, attach the engine, and then join the other side of the cowling together. So just a comment that some people have been saying online, that about fitting the undercarriage, about potentially dropping it into the wheel well from above. I can't see a, a sensible way of doing that, so I'm just following the kit instructions. I know the undercarriage later on is a bit fiddly to fit, uh, but we'll, deep, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But as I say, fitting the wheel well, or fitting the undercarriage, sorry, into the wheel well from the top, I just can't see a logical way of doing it. The plate we're securing at the moment provides structural support for the for the actual nacelle. So, as I say, I'm not entirely sure how you go going about doing that, but we're just carrying on, just gluing everything up, making sure we get a good strong bond, as we've done before. So now we've got the front intake to fit, just test fitting here, and there's also a vent at the bottom of the engine. But what we'll do is we'll fit these later on. I don't want to damage these parts when we come to sand the seams flush. So now the nacelles have been curing overnight, we can come in with a sander. So using a fine sander just to remove most of that excess glue that's come out. And then cleaning that up using a sanding sponge. And once we've done that, we need to re-establish the panel lines. So starting off with the razor saw just to get us going. And then using the Tamiya scriber just to fill that line in. And then coming in behind, using a little bit of extra thin, it'll just melt any sort of burring, any roughness we get through scribing. And we're doing the same thing on the outer nacelles. There's not as much damage to clean up. But you can see, same thing again, using the razor saw. And coming in with a scriber, just opening those panel lines up a little bit more to match the rest of the kit. And once we're happy with that, sparing amounts of extra thin, just run it down the line that you've created and it should unify it. So as I was saying before, we've got the intakes. I'm spraying up the interior of the intake in the underside colour of XF69. And the reason behind that is we'll be able to mask off the radiator section using a little bit of foam before we come to paint the rest of the aircraft. So just test fitting the intake on the end. What you want to try and do here is keep the panel line. So if you hold the part in place and just let the glue flow around. But don't try and nudge it too much. You might uh, get glue coming out the seam. Which will then obviously make that panel line disappear. And we'll have to come back in and rescribe it. But if you're careful with the gluing, you can get away without doing that. So what I found here is this nacelle, I've not quite got the join right. So I just need to remove the edge. And once we've done that, we're quite happy. We can come in with the glue. Just be careful when you're doing this. That you don't get glue running off into your fingers and obviously melting in, causing a fingerprint. And now we've got the underside coming in on the bottom of the cowling. So a little slot it locates into. Just get this part as central as you can.
just coming in with the glue securing that into place and now we've got the wings to deal with so what I'm pointing out here there's a couple of points where this is where the plastic gets injected into the mold and it can leave a slight tab so in some cases it's raised sometimes it's recessed on my kit these are both raised so I'm using a scraper to take away the material and then to smooth it all out I'm going to come in and sand it flush so using a bit of masking tape to protect the rivet detail and then using a sander just to take those uh, scratches from the scraper out and once we've done that we can remove the tape and use the polisher just to smooth everything out unify it like the rest of the surface of the wing so we've got two of those to do on the top of the wing and we've also got two on the underside so the ones on the underside are hidden in these access panels so we just need to take care of them so something to point out on my kit what I found uh, through handling I missed it out in the review so I've marked on the wing using a pencil and what I'm trying to show you here if you try and catch it in the light hopefully you can see so some of my riveting detail fades out disappears and comes back sometimes it's it's very uh, it's very very faint other times it's non-existent but as I say looking around the kit I missed it in the review unfortunately but handling the parts more frequently I started to notice some areas which are just lacking detail so I think this is a moulding issue it'd be interesting to see how many other people have the same problem so if you do have one of these kits go and have a look uh, and let me know in the comments if you're affected by this problem so most of the areas are round about the edges so particularly around the flap area I'm pointing out here so this line of rivets right on the edge you can see it fades off and comes back it fades off and comes back and it's the same thing as I say going around the outer edge so I've got around the flaps around the ailerons the wing tips themselves there's a few areas on the fuselage which also suffer the same problems so I think what's happening is the mold when it's coming out the plastic isn't quite cooled enough so it's coming out a bit quick but as I say I don't know whether it's just my kit or if this is a more widespread problem so as I say let me know down in the comments if you're affected but it's not a problem for myself I happen to have a riveting tool so I can pop these back in but if you didn't it would be a real pain so moving on we've got ejector pins to take care of in the flaps and same as we've done before we're starting off using the scraper just to remove most of the material and then using a sanding stick which I've cut at 45 degrees to allow me to get into the corners and just sanding that flush so now we're at the point we're going to join the two wing halves together I've actually sprayed the interior of the wing uh, in black using just XF1 just to provide me to make sure there's no grey styrene showing through when you look into that wheel well and what I'm using here this is Revel Contactia glue which is a slower setting solution just adding that to the centre pegs and then we're offering the bottom of the wing to the top half the good thing about the Revel glue is it grips really well and being a slower solution allows us to get the parts manipulated together and now we're using some Tamiya Extra Thin just running that down the centre seam squeezing it all together and once we're happy with position we're securing that using some tape so I always glue wings in sections so we're just carrying on we're doing the bits between the, the engine the cells themselves if you hold the wing upside down like I'm doing here and tap the glue from the underneath it avoids the glue running off into your fingers and causing fingerprints so once we're happy we've got enough glue in there we can give it a good squeeze I'm looking to try and get some of that plastic to melt out the seam so it means we're not going to have any issues when it comes to sanding it and if you don't have enough glue and seams on wings and fuselages you can actually sand through the area and you have that seam pop open again so just to avoid that make sure you're using plenty of glue and what I'm going to do is go around the entire wing as we've been doing squeezing it all together and then taping it into place and then what I'll do I always leave parts like this for at least 24 hours to make sure that we're not going to get any sink marks coming back make sure everything's fully cured before we come back in and sand 
round the edges of the wings. So we're just carrying on, we're putting plenty of glue in the back of this uh, aileron. Make sure you do this so you don't have problems later on. I kept having seams reappear on me. Before we install the nacelle, I'm just going around spraying in the back of it as well. As I say, I'm just trying to avoid any styrene showing through. And then before we close the port wing, we need to install the landing lights. So I've left myself a wee note here to make sure I don't forget. And we've just sprayed the area using some black and we're going to come in using crystal clear to install the clear parts into place like we've been doing throughout the build. So using plenty of glue and the idea is when we put the clear part in the glue will help fill any gaps just giving it a nudge into place to make sure it's correctly seated. As I say the parts are very tightly to fit and we're cleaning up any excess that we have using a moistened cotton bud. Now I decided to use Molotov liquid chrome pen in the back of this to try and replicate the uh, reflective lens but I wouldn't recommend doing this because what I found was, you can't see it in the footage but it actually went very grainy uh, and didn't actually do a very good job of covering the lenses so I won't be doing this again I think I'll just use my standard aluminium for the next time. So now we're dealing with the rivet detail we lost through the sanding of the nacelles so using the rivet tool so this is a tool set from a company called Galaxy Tools and we're actually using the 0.55 riveter but they'll make other sizes as well. I'll do a separate review for this later on once we get part 2 sorted out. So say they're very good quality tools. And as I say it gives you the ability and the confidence to tackle jobs like this without any real hassle. So now that the wings have been curing overnight, we can deal with the seam on the leading edge. So you can see we've obviously got what looks like a gap, but it's actually the paint showing through uh, from when I painted the interior of the wing. So we're just taking off the edge using a, a sanding stick, so there's a harder side and a softer side. So starting off with the hard side and then switching over to the sponge. The sponge is great because it keeps the profile of the wing. And once we've done that, we can then polish the seam and just check it to make sure We've not got any sink marks and no real issues. Like I mentioned before, make sure you get plenty filler in the back of this aileron. I'm using some Mr. Surfacer 500 here. Uh, but actually, later on, once I've sanded this all out, I kept having the seam coming back. So just be aware of that. I eventually managed to get it to disappear, but it took some time. So as mentioned before, I need to go back in and pop in the rivet detail. So just marking that out by eye with a pencil and then popping it back in with a riveter. So once we've done that we can move on with the rest of the wing construction. So we've got this inner nacelle to fit, just drop straight into the wing no problems. And the same thing again, because I've used black paint around the excess of this part, it looks as though the gap is bigger than it is. As I say, there's no issues at all fitting these nacelles to this wing. Normally you get a bit of a problem around about the wing route, but I found no real issues. But one thing to note, to get rid of the gap between the nacelle and the wing, if you hold the part in place, and then come in with the glue, and just make sure that these are seated correctly, you can avoid a gap. So we're just putting the outer nacelle on, just checking the alignment, we're all happy with that. I'm going to secure it in place using some tape to make sure that the parts don't move. It's quite important you get the cowlings and the front of the nacelle aligned correctly. As I say, when we come in with the spinner later on, we want this all nice and smooth and not looking crooked. So once we've secured that in the wing, we're just using a bit of extra thin, running that round the seam. And we're just checking the alignment on the front, making sure these nacelles are correctly in place. So coming in now using Mr. Surfacer 500, what I'm going to do is fill in the lines around the outside of the nacelles. I'm not trying to make them disappear, all I'm trying to do here is reduce them in size. So by painting Mr. Surfacer 500 into any gaps I'm finding, and letting that dry, I can then come back in using Mr. Leveling Thinner, on a cotton bud to remove the excess. 
And as I say, that'll leave me enough filler in the actual join. It'll look like a panel line. So hopefully you can see that here. That's the end result. So I'm quite happy with that. So we can move on. But before we do, just remembered, because we've sanded the leading edge, we need to put the panel line detail in, because obviously these would continue around the leading edge of the wings themselves. So if you drop your razor saw into the panel line and then sort of run it over the top of the surface, just to pop them back in. Use some Mr. Surfacer 1500 to fill in the ejector pins. Just flood it in there and it just self-levels, just smooths everything out. So we're just checking the wings themselves, just giving you an idea of what things should look like at this point. So quite happy so far. As I say, the join with the nacelles to the wing root itself is fantastic. No issues at all. As I say, it looks like there's a gap, but it's just the paint showing through. We're seamless at this point. So we can move on now, we've got the carburetor intakes to fit to the side of the cells. just be aware the kit gives you a couple of guide pins on the centre part, which I'm trying to show you here, but you almost need to fit the, these further forward, so if you check reference photos just to make sure you get these glued into the correct position, which I've tried to show you in the footage, um, but I don't think it comes across as clear as I wanted to. So if you need to, just pause that video there and just check the alignment with your own kit. Same again on the other nacelle. And it's just a case of installing these on all the bottoms of the nacelles themselves. So now we've got the flaps, you've got an option you can have them up or down. I've decided to pose them down just to add a bit more interest to the model. So before we do that, another thing to point out, which I found here, so hopefully you can see this. So where the moulding is to give you recessed uh, rivet detail. My kit's been taken out the mould too quick. So unfortunately that raised, or sorry, that recessed detail is now raised detail. So we'll have to deal with that. Uh, we'll just have to sand it flush and pop the rivet detail back in. But we've also got this inner flap, which is two sections going together. There's a couple of ejector pins which you need to sand flush to make sure the parts seat correctly. So just test fitting that here. And once we're happy with that, we're coming in with the glue. Using quite a lot of extra thin here. Because it dries so quickly, I'm just trying to flood the area as quickly as I can and then get the part in before the glue dries. Once we're happy with that, we're just securing it using a couple of clamps. And one more for good luck. So we can leave that to dry and we can move on with the rest. So as I say, we're going to tackle the uh, the issues with the kit that I'm finding. So again, if you've got this on yours, let me know in the comments down below. It'd be great to see, as I say, how many people are affected by this. Or whether it's just a small production run. Maybe only a few kits have been affected. It's quite simple. Just sand it smooth. And then pop it back in. But as I say, if you don't have a riveting tool, this could be a real headache. So it's something to be aware of. So once we've done that, I'm pointing out here, this is the uh, the inlet for the oil coolers. So one of those to fit on each cowling. And we've also fitted on each side of the wings, I'm pointing out here, this is the inlet for the cabin heating. So it just sort of fits on the outside edge of the wing. And then just try to blend it all in together. This took me a fair bit of time. Uh, so far it's probably the worst fitting part of the kit. So just be aware of that when you come to tackle it yourself. Same on the other side. So again, just pointing out the location of these oil cooler inlets. Again, just check your kit instructions and the references. So on the leading edge, we've got these parts to fit. So some people online are not too sure what these are, but if you don't know, you don't know. These are meant to represent the barrage balloon cutters. So with flying over low over Nazi Germany, uh, we obviously don't want our Lancaster being taken out by a barrage balloon. So the idea is that these would hopefully cut the cable uh, and avoid doing any da further damage to the actual bomber itself. So be aware there's no locating points on the front edge. This is all done by eye. So I'm using the centre seam as a guide and I've also marked the rough location using a pencil, uh, checking reference photos and the kit instructions to make sure we get these parts in the correct position. So what I found is if you use a little bit of extra thin on the back, it just allows you enough to get these parts located. 
And once we're happy, we can use a bit of extra thin. Oh, maybe a bit too much there. That's not a problem. So same thing again, touch of glue. Just allows you to get this onto the wing itself. And then if we're a little bit off, we can just maneuver that into the correct position. So we've done the leading edges of both wings. Quite happy how that's turned out. We've also masked up the landing lights using the mask set. So now we're on to the bomb base. We've got six bombs and the cookie bomb to build up. So these are, I think these are 500 pound bombs. And it's just two halves going together. Just glue that seam. And then there's a fairing to go on the rear end. Just secure that in place, bit of a nudge. So we've got six of those to do. And then we can do the cookie bomb itself. So for the mouldings of this, it's two, or the two sides are the same. So you need to pick a side. And then we need to drill out a couple of holes, which allows us to install the uh, pins, which will then be secured into the bomb bay itself. So once you've opened up the holes, as I say, put the pins in. Make sure they're seated correctly and glue them into place. And then we can just join the two halves together as we've done before. Again, just making sure we get a good join, making that seam disappear as much as possible. And we'll leave that to cure overnight before we come in and sand it. So we're just using a couple of clamps to make sure we get a nice strong join. Got the bomb bay doors to deal with. There's a couple of ejector pins. You can see the worst ones are at the edges. There's a couple in the middle which are very faint. You'd probably get away with not dealing with these, but just, just catching it in the light, you can kind of see them here. But we will need to take care of the ones on the end as they're quite predominant. So, same procedure as we've been doing throughout the build. Starting off using the scraper just to remove that excess material and then we're using a sanding stick just chop it 45 degrees allows you to get into the corner and just sand that flush and once we're happy with that we can use the polisher which will remove any sanding scratches so just showing you there got that one on the left hand side to deal with but we've made that one on the right disappear unfortunately I got a bit excessive of the sanding so I'm having to pop the detail back in using the riveter so now we're at the point we need to fit the front turret. So one thing to be aware of, just look at the kit instructions. At this point here, in this step, we can see the front fairing has already been fitted before the main turret. Uh, but don't do this, otherwise you won't fit the turret. So put this part in at the back, install that, and then put the turret into place. And then once we're happy with that, then put the fairing on. If you put the fairing on before, you won't be able to fit the front turret. So because we're going to do that, I'll go through gluing the clear parts onto the turret itself. So using some micro crystal clear, we're just running that round the outside of the part. Because it dries crystal clear, I'm not too worried about any glue I get on the inside. I just want to make sure this is not going to come apart on me later on. So I'll get a decent amount of glue around the outside edge. And then what we can do is offer that up to the turret itself. And we can seat that in, make sure you get the parts together securely. But we just be careful, it's obviously clear parts, we don't want to cause any creasing or cracking through excessive force. But once you get it seated, you can see the glue coming out. But because it's a PVA based glue, we can just clean that up using a moistened cotton bud. And once we're happy with that, we'll let that dry for a few hours. So now that that's cured, we can come in and we can install it. So drop it straight in. It's a little bit fiddly, but you can get it in no problem. And now we can fit the fairing. So what I find through test fitting on my kit, there's a gap on either side. And this is caused because the part naturally wants to spring open. So just through careful test fitting, we can manipulate this to try and minimise the gap as much as possible. So this is why I'm taking a bit of time, just trying to assess what's going on and how best to proceed. 
So what I decide to do is I've taped one end down and then we come in on the other side we're going to tape that end down as well just to try and hold this in the correct location. And then starting at the top we're adding some glue and making sure this is correctly seated so giving it a bit of a nudge down. So now that we're happy with the position of that, we can glue the rest of it. So we've still got a little bit of a gap which we'll need to take care of later on, but we've certainly reduced the size of it through test fitting. So now the last couple of things to do, we're putting on the lights on the underside. So these are IFF lights, identification, friend or foe. These are a lighting system the Allies use to identify planes coming back home to avoid getting shot down by anti-aircraft fire. What we're using here is the Tamiya clear colours, so the red, the green and the orange. So IFF lights are in a certain code according to the aircraft, so you'll need to check your references depending on which version you're doing. So I think I'm correct in the sequence we're about to use here. I'm just using a drill bit to open up the holes just to clean out any excess glue uh, or any burring we've got. And then just test fitting these parts to make sure they sit flush. Once we're happy with that, we can secure them in place using some crystal clear. So you can see I've painted the back of the lights in the aluminium colour, similar to what we did with the landing lights. So running our glue in the hole, using plenty of it, it will give us a nice seal. So starting off with the orange, then the green, and then the red towards the tail. I believe this is the correct code. As I say, there's not a lot of information out there, um, but I think this is the, the right orientation. You could fit these parts later on, uh, once you've painted everything together. But I like to do it at this stage, to make sure we've got everything nice and flush. So now we've pretty much finished the main construction. All the parts need to be cleaned up before they go into primer. So I'm using some airbrush cleaner here, and using a glove in my hand to make sure I don't get any more fingerprints on the model. Just a case of going round and wiping everything down. This will remove fingerprints, any residue, any sanding dust we've got when we've been sanding and scribing. So it's just a case of going round everything, main fuselage. So I've also masked up the side windows using the Art Scale Kit mask set. Again, no issues, parts fit really well. Unfortunately for you guys, I don't have any footage of before going into primer. So what I'm trying to show you here is what we've done so far. We've primed everything used Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. We'll cover the priming of this model in the next section. As I say, I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how far we've got. And demonstrating here the superb fit of the wings to the main fuselage. It is a little tight, so just be aware of this, and the more times you take them on and off, I imagine it'll loosen up. But it certainly makes painting this model far easier, even just handling. As you can see here, uh, trying to manipulate it on the bench, it's a fair size lump. But the fact we can take the wings off is fantastic. So that's about all we can cover today in part two. We'll do a separate section on priming and painting this. I'd like to say thank you very much to everybody that's liked and subscribed and commented. I'm really blown away with everybody's feedback that they're giving. So until next time guys, remember to hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and if you hit the subscribe button you'll get a notification of when part 3 is out. So until next time, have a good one.